involved in the total cohesion, mainly and over wide areas, damage has been inflicted. I offer my deepest sympathy to the people who have suffered the disaster. Regarding our nuclear power facilities, some of the nuclear power plants have stopped automatically, but so far, no radioactive material or radiation has been confirmed to have been leaked to the outside. There has been no information on the, of those lines so far. And given the situation, an emergency disaster response headquarters has been set up with myself as the head. We will secure the safety of the people of Japan, and in order to minimize the damage, the government will make every effort possible. And we ask the people of Japan to continue to be cautious and vigilant and keep tuned in to the reports on the television and radio. And we ask the people of Japan to act calmly. You are watching continuous coverage of the disaster that is unfolding in Japan. An 8.8 .8 magnitude earthquake has hit the nation, uh, centered just off the northeast coast. A massive uh, tsunami has already hit, which uh, some reports are saying was as large as 10 metres. It has devastated a very large area uh, on the Pacific coast uh, of Japan. It's unclear just how many people uh, have died or lost their lives at this stage. There are certainly reports of many injuries. We're also seeing and hearing of reports of many fires that have broken out across the country, even in uh, in Tokyo. Let's just let's just now cross to uh, the BBC's coverage of the situation. And so the biggest concern is in fact the tsunami wave now, as it's higher than some Pacific islands. Yeah. Uh, well. <coughs> Yeah, well, uh, basically, what you're going to have is that the worst impact is going to be in Japan. We don't have any doubt about that. So, in some of the Pacific Islands, remember, the islands are relatively small. So, wave is like they pass through them. So, usually, you don't get too much of an impact. In the case of the Hawaiian Islands, however, it's different. Because, well, yeah, you can you think in, in, about the Hawaiian Islands in terms of like a group of islands, but when you go, let's say, up to a certain depth, it's a big chunk of rock. He said the whole archipelago is a big chunk of rock, so the waves tend to, to grow higher than just for a normal uh, island in the Pacific. So an island, a, a coral rock surrounded by coral reefs, let's say like one, has a much less those probabilities of like getting a big impact and affected by tsunami waves and some, right. some other places like Hawaii, let's say. Okay, well, Dr. Zaldana, thank you very much indeed for that, and uh, we wish you well for uh, the coming hours. Just uh, to update you, we're getting the latest uh, uh, casualty figures uh, as a result of this earthquake. Uh, the reports coming in from Japan say the death toll has now risen from three to five. Um, but uh, the suspicion very much that those are just preliminary figures and already uh, uh, reports of uh, many injuries, including in Tokyo, which in many ways was not... Uh, uh, feeling the full effect in the same way as uh, places like uh, Sendai, further northeast, and uh, in areas like uh, the Miyagi uh, prefecture, again uh, <coughs> northeast, there are reports that many, many people are missing. And uh, unsurprisingly, when you look at these pictures and the kind of vehicles caught up in this, and uh, the buildings that are being battered by this wave of water, we can only suspect that uh, the death toll is likely to rise. Let's uh, get a uh, perspective from elsewhere now. We can speak to our correspondent Cindy Su, who's in uh, Taipei, in Taiwan. Uh, thank you for joining us, Cindy. Give us a sense, uh, you too, on a warning. What is the situation there? Well, um, as you know, a, a tsunami warning has been issued in Taiwan. In fact, the uh, first place where the tsunami is, is expected to hit is, uh, is Huanan City in the coastal area, and that's going to be in about half an hour. So very soon from now, and the next place will be uh, a few minutes after that. And uh, the second biggest port in Taiwan is also so expected to be affected, and that will be in about an hour from now. So the, sorry, go ahead. Uh, no, do carry on. So the, uh, the warning has been issued, but there's no 
estimate, even from the Central Weather Bureau, on how big the waves will be. Uh, they don't seem to know, or they're telling us they, they do not have anything to issue to us. Uh, the, one of the local TV stations has interviewed a seismic expert from a, a, a university here who estimates it could be about 50 uh, centimeters. So not a huge uh, tsunami, but they're definitely telling people to take precautions, stay away from the coastal areas, stay away from, from the beaches. They're not evacuating people right now, but they're telling uh, fishermen, fishing boats to come back to harbor and for everyone to just be, be on alert, including fire departments. And how much concern does that cause? Or again, because of uh, the region that people are in, are they more uh, uh, immune to the, the panic that might spread in other places? Well, this is definitely not a surprising uh, a warning for people in Taiwan because Taiwan is one of the most seismically active countries in the world. Um, it, it, in fact, in 1999, it suffered a major earthquake where more than 2,400 people were killed and 50,000 buildings were damaged. So people are not surprised, but they are definitely worried because you don't see an earthquake of this size happen every day. And, and this is happening right in their neighboring country, Japan, which is not far away at all. And we were hearing in Japan that they are well trained almost in the kind of procedures to follow, follow that people have helmets, they have these grab bags that they have ready packed in case they need to move at speed to get away from these kind of uh, incidents. Is that the case also in Taiwan? I would say not. <laughs> uh, this is what's surprising to people who, um, or who are not you know, born and raised in Taiwan. Uh, there's even a sense of complacency here in, in some respects because um, people are so used to earthquakes happening and most of them are, are, are not serious earthquakes. I, I get SMSs, uh, text messages from the Central Weather Bureau and I, sometimes I get three in a day and they're very small earthquakes, one or two or three on a Richter scale and no damages are caused. But um, people forget that actually each year in Taiwan, more than 70 people are killed and you know, more than uh, uh, seven million dollars in damages are caused by even small minor earthquakes. So it's surprising that even you know, in a workplace when earthquakes happen, uh, even when you can feel it, nobody gets under the desk. Uh, you know, in, in some schools they do have training for the, for the kids, but not at the level that you would expect. And just very briefly, Cindy, in terms of the tsunami, you made the point that any wave would be very small. Are there any defences off the coast um, there? Well, I, I have to uh, uh, clarify that the Central Weather Bureau, which is the authority on, on this matter, has not actually estimated how big the waves will be. So it's only a university professor who has estimated. So we actually do not know how big the waves will be. Um,